right, I'm gonna go ahead. Ah, okay. So let's get underway and get started. Where we ended last time uh, in session three, or maybe it was session four, uh, we finished through scene seven. And in scene seven, Satan and Ori, Satan and sin and death. That was scene six. Scene seven, Satan and Uriel have a dialogue just as <clears throat> uh, Satan enters Eden. Uh, he arrives in paradise, he arrives on earth. And <clears throat> in the unexpurgated, unedited Paradise Lost, there's a great deal of action that goes on before the temptation of Adam and Eve. Unfallen angels try to convince Satan not to carry out his mission, which is to uh, tempt man in the form of Adam and Eve in the garden to rebel against God. That's his mission. And uh, Raphael and one of the other, Raphael and Gabriel, I think, try to talk him out of it. Uh, and they are unsuccessful. So in scene eight, we have Adam and Eve, Satan and sin. So uh, Bud, why don't you read Adam? And <clears throat> real fast, close the door here. Hang on, we got the t shirt. Sure. Hang on, just a second. <laughs> and Monica, can you read Eve? Of course. All right, I'll read Satan. Maybe I should take my collar off for that, huh? <laughs> yeah, it might, might help. <laughs> I know. It looks like a Kind of an unbelievable and scene. we'll see if someone else joins us and they can read sin which comes later and let me put the text up there it is scene eight all right i have to move some things around that you can't see and satan is seeing adam and eve so that is what prompts his opening sentences. And when he says, oh, hell, uh, the person who read Satan the first time last night said it the way we would say it. And of course, Satan wouldn't say it that way because it's his kingdom he's talking. So he would say it enthusiastically and positively. Oh. Oh, hell, what do mine eyes with grief behold? Into our room of bliss thus high advanced, creatures of other mold, earth-born perhaps. Ah, gentle pair, ye little think how nigh your change approaches, and all these delights will vanish and deliver ye to woe. More woe, the more your taste is now of joy. Henceforth, my dwelling haply may not please like this fair paradise your sense. Yet such accept your maker's work. He gave it me, which I as freely give. Hell shall unfold to entertain you too her widest gates. Thank him who puts me loath to this revenge on you who wrong me not for him who wronged. And should I at your harmless innocence melt as I do, yet public reason just honor an empire with revenge enlarged by conquering this new world compels me now to do what else though damned I should abhor. All right, so Adam and Eve do not yet see Satan though he sees them and he is speaking as if to them, but they don't hear him yet in that little speech. And now Adam and Eve address each other and Bud, action. Okay. Fair consort, the hour of night and all things now retired to rest. To 
excessive in the timely view of sleep, now falling with soft uh, slumbrous weight inclines, our eyelids, other creatures all day long were of idle, unemployed, and less need rest. Man hath his daily work of body or mind appointed, which declares his dignity. With thee conversing, I forget all time, all seasons under change, all pleas alike. Sweet the breath of morning, her rising sweet, with charm of earliest birds, Pleasant the sun when first on this delightful land he spreads his orient beams on herb, tree, fruit, and flower, blistering with dew, fragrant the fertile earth after soft showers, and sweet the coming on of grateful evening mild. Then silent night with this her solemn bird and this fair moon, and this the gems of heaven, her starry train, but neither breath of morn when she ascends with charm of earliest birds, nor rising sun on this delight land, nor herb, fruit, flower, glistering with dew, nor fragrance after showers, nor grateful evening mild, nor silent night with their solemn bird, nor walk by morn, or glittering starlight without thee is sweet. And the stage direction reads, Adam and Eve sleep. Mm. Wasn't that just the most beautiful way of saying, husband saying to wife, wife, I think it's time to go to bed. And the wife says, I love you. Yeah, you're hey. the sweetest. You're the sweetest. Yeah. 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 Very beautiful. Mm -hmm. Peggy's, Peggy's, Peggy's going to say that to me tonight. What's that? Peggy's going to say that to me tonight. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. That's, that's how we should all be. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's, that's marriage before the fall. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Now, in Satan's next speech, he is joined by sin. And if you remember from earlier... And if you don't, here is a uh, previously on, uh, previously on Milton's drama of Paradise Lost, you saw that sin was born out of the brow of Satan, uh, like as Athena was born out of the head of Zeus, sprung from the head of Zeus. So that's a, a nod to classical mythology that Milton has used in fleshing out uh, the biblical story of the Garden of Eden and the Christian traditions about it, uh, which rest on very slim biblical ground, but have been developed greatly, though never as greatly as what Milton does. Avi, I see you've logged on. Would you like to read Sin? Page 44, if it's printed. Yeah. Okay, he may be multitasking. That's okay. All right. Satan is still listening to Adam and Eve as they go to sleep, and their love for each other is hateful to him. So that's the first part of this speech. Satan, sight hateful, sight tormenting. Thus these two imparadised in one another's arms, the happier Eden shall enjoy their fill of bliss on bliss, while I to hell am thrust, where neither joy nor love, but fierce desire among our other torments, not the least, still unfulfilled with pain of longing pines. He is jealous. And now his daughter enters. Satan is joined by sin. The animal spirits that from pure blood arise like gentle breaths from rivers pure, thence raise at least distempered, discontented thoughts, vain hopes, vain aims, inordinate desires blown up with high conceits engendering pride. Monica, will you read sin for us? Uh, yes. Uh, why is Lepis do Thou, Eve, now is the pleasant time, the cool, the silent, save where silent yields to the night warbling. 
bird that now awake tunes sweetest his love labor song, now reigns full orbed the moon, and with the more pleasing light, shadowy sets off the face of things. In vain, if not regard, heaven waits with all his eyes, whom to behold but thee, nature's desire, in whose sight all things joy with ravishment, attracted by the beauty still to gaze. Uh, I approach the tree, but what fair plant I see with fruit surcharged, deigns known to ease thy load and taste thy sweet. Nor God nor man is knowledge so despised, or envy, or what reserve forbids to taste. Forbid who will, none shall from the withhold longer thy offer good. By why else said here, sweet of thyself, but much more sweet thus cropped, forbidden here, it seems, as only fit for gods, yet able to make gods of men. And why not gods of men, since good, the more communicated, more abundant grows, the author not impaired, but honored more? Here, happy creature, fair angelic Eve, partake thou also, happy though thou art, happier thou mayst be, worthier canst not be. Taste this and be henceforth among the gods, thyself a goddess, not to earth confined. Okay, let's stop there for a moment. <clears throat> so sin is echoing Satan, her father's statements. But what is this henceforth among the gods, thyself a goddess, not to earth confined? So sin is talking sort of at Eve, who is asleep uh, at this point. About what? Does, do Satan and sin really believe that if they rebel against God, Adam and Eve will be gods? like themselves or like they think they are sounds yeah. like it doesn't yeah, it yeah they want to uh, awaken eve first right awaken and try this you will be a goddess right yeah right and of course that is what the serpent says to eve in mm -hmm. uh genesis in genesis chapter three uh the very short piece of which this on which this entire poem is based uh, that single chapter of Genesis that so that does have a direct biblical basis mm -hmm. and okay Avi does not have a microphone so I'm here reading sure you want to I think though <laughs> that you're reading Adam. hang on a second I don't have the paper in front of me <laughs> Adam I think but yeah, I can I can wait for it. It's okay. Why don't you read? Whoop, where'd it go? Uh oh. Mm. Okay. Yes, you know what, Bud, why don't you read Eve this time, and we will have, yes, why don't you read Eve, this particular speech of Eve. Okay. She's not talking to Adam this time, so. You want me to talk just normally, guy talk? Yeah, no, yeah. Don't no, go please. up here like this. <laughs> hey, he says I should be up here. <laughs> I can be up here. I don't know how long you could sustain that though. So <laughs> <laughs> try it if you like. <laughs> oh, soul in whom my thoughts find all repose, my glory, my perfection, glad I see thy face and mourn return for I this night, such night till this I never passed have dreamed. Close at mine ear, one called me forth to walk with gentle voice. I thought it thine, it spoke. I rose as, uh, as at thy call, but found thee not. 
I, to find thee, I directed then my walk. And on me thought alone, I passed through ways that brought me on a sudden. <laughs> Excuse me. Sorry about that. That's okay. That brought me on a sudden to a tr to the tree of interdicted knowledge. There it seemed much fairer to my fancy than by day. And as I wondered, looked beside it stood, one shaped and winged like one of those from heaven. By us oft seen her dewy locks distilled ambrosia, and on that tree she also gazed. I make a good woman. <laughs> by, by the way, I misspoke. She is talking to Adam. She's uh, talking to Adam about the dream she had. Mm. Oh. And then she paused not, but with a venturous arm she plucked, she tasted me damp, horror chilled, as such bold mind. What? what? Vouched. 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 Vouched with a deed so bold, so doing she knew nigh, and to me held, uh, even to my mouth, of that same fruit held part, um, one second. Okay. which she had plucked, the pleasant savory smell so quickly, appetite that I and me thought I could not but taste, forthwith, oh, forthwith up, to the, up to the clouds, with her I flew, and underneath beheld the earth outstretched, and that's a wide prospect, a wide prospect, a wide prospect wide, and various, wondering at my flight and change to this high exaltation. Suddenly my guide was gone, and I, methought, sunk down and fell asleep. But oh, how glad I waked to find this but a dream. All right. But did you notice that because you were doing a voice, you were actually acting? <laughs> yeah. yeah, strange. <laughs> Not strange. The two are related. You know, when you're acting, you're doing something different than when you would usually do. And mm -hmm. sometimes that involves altering one's voice. And you altered your voice and you were doing a character instead of just reading it as yourself. And you you were in it. How about that? Yeah. 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 It, it seemed it seemed you know kind of natural. Yeah. yeah I, I'm sitting next to him and I can hear the difference. And I can hear the difference when you're know, the galleries. Yeah. Because you're mod, you're in your normal voice, you're not modulating mm -hmm. at all. You're just reading straight flat. Reading straight flat. Yeah. yeah. Right. I should right. read straight flat. I should, so how about I should, that? I should always talk as a girl. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, but it's instructive. You know, when, uh, let me take this off for a moment. I want to go back. And Eve's dream is something that sin has put into her by whispering in her ear just before that. And Eve tells the dream to Adam when <clears throat> they awake. And in that she describes sin as an angelic being mm. and says such as we often see around here mm -hmm. and that that is something that is in more of milton there's more scenes of uh, the archangels inhabiting the garden of eden and communicating uh, in fact the archangels attempt as i said earlier to stop satan on his mission but the phenomenon that we just uh, we just observed in what you did, bud, is why St. Paul says in his epistles, put on the Lord Jesus Christ, okay? He, he uses a metaphor of putting on a garment, of dressing, mm -hmm. and he means get in character, okay? Oh. It's interesting that St. Paul uses acting metaphor because huh. there's no, we don't know how he knew about that uh, other than perhaps from just sort of public drama and comedy that he might have seen in the Greek world, but he uses that as a way of saying, you know, if you start acting like your mentor, like your teacher, you may very well become like him. Mm -hmm. That's what he means by putting on Christ like a suit of clothes, uh, get in character and get in a character that is his character, oh, which wow. is pretty exciting. Yeah, I, I like and, being in character, you know, more yeah. Computers and yeah, Avi has written a text that Calvin has some good phrase 
Whoop, where'd it go? Oh, where'd it go? Yeah. Calvin has some good phrase about the theater of nature in God's creation. Ah. Hmm. Okay. And remember that as a sort of Presbyterian. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> these, things, these, these things were formulated or had not quite crystallized during Milton's lifetime. I mean, he was a, a Puritan, part of the Puritan party in the English Civil War, uh, but he would have known his Calvin or would have at least read uh, some of Reformed doctrine. All right. Where is, where was I? Let me find where I was. Okay, because the next, all right, talked about that. And Eve awakes, and we heard from Eve. And then we hear from Satan. So let me put that back on. There we go. Okay, there we go. Satan says, one fatal tree there stands of knowledge called forbidden them to taste. Knowledge forbidden? Can it be death? And do they only stand by ignorance in that their happy state, the proof of their obedience and their faith? Oh, fair foundation laid whereon to build their ruin. Hence, I will excite their minds with more desire to know and to reject envious commands invented with design to keep them low whom knowledge might exalt. So he's got his plan. But first with narrow search, I must walk round this garden and no corner leave unspied. Yet happy pair, enjoy till I return short pleasures for long woes are to succeed. Mm. He really believes, and this is one of the things that people have always argued about with the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, right? which is what they wind up eating the fruit of and what they were forbidden to eat the fruit of. Satan talks about it as if it's just knowledge. How can knowledge be a bad thing? So you see, he is already narrowing the scope of what's being talked about in a deceptive way. Knowledge as a category is not what will defeat Adam and Eve and what will enslave them to sin and separate them from God. It is only a particular knowledge, the knowledge of good and evil. And the irony of it is that in order for us to be free, in order for man to have free will, he had to be given the opportunity to make choices. And the risk of having choices is that you will choose the wrong thing. Okay, So that choice had to be there, which means that evil had to exist. Uh, and they had to have the opportunity to choose it uh, but it is the knowledge of the difference between good and evil that is the problem, not knowledge in general. All right, Bud, you want to try to uh, okay. I'll get back my man voice. do Adam, and here's the first two lines, and then I'll have to scroll down. Best image of myself and dear half, the trouble of my thoughts, this night and sleep. Who's he talking about? thinking about Eve. Yeah, he's talking mm -hmm. to Eve about Eve. Okay. Affects me equally, nor can I like this uncouth dream of evil sprung I fear. Yet evil whence? In thee can harbor none created pure. But know that in thy soul are many lesser faculties that serve reason as chief among these fancy next wild work produces oft and most in dreams, no matching words and beans, deeds long past or late. Uh, uh, evil into my into the mind of God or man may come and go so unapproved and leave no spot or blame behind, which gives me hope that what in sleep thou didst abhor to dream, uh, waking thou never wilt consent to do. 
be not disheartened, not cloud those looks, and let us to our fresh employments rise among the groves and fountains and the flowers. All right, very good. Here's a reminder of what Adam and Eve do. Okay, paradise is not a vacation on a tropical island. <laughs> paradise was paradise because there was no sin. And there were, because there was no sin, there was no death. But they still have work to do because work is good. Okay, work is not something that exists because of sin and death. God creates man and gives him a job. And that job is to tend the garden, to be the gardener in paradise. So they have employments among the groves, the fountains, and the flowers. They have stuff to do. And that's important because work is part of our happiness, as is rest. And the last thing God created on the seventh day was rest. He created the Sabbath okay, and commanded humans to observe it in remembrance of creation. Okay, so they wouldn't get so wrapped up in the work that they did have to do that they would forget that the work they had to do and all the things, groves, fountains, and flowers that they had to do it with was a gift from God. Uh, who has to be remembered always in order for that connection between creator and create and creature to continue to exist and to flow. So that is what that is about. And isn't it interesting that Adam, yes, I love these lines. Evil into the mind of God or man may come and go, so unapproved and leave no spot or blame behind. Okay, this is a very important concept. Okay, Jesus teaches that lust of the heart is adultery. Okay? And that simply means that the intent is the seed of the sin. And if you have intent, you've already committed the sin even if you don't carry it out. But intent means really entertaining the possibility. It means doing something, even if that something is only in your heart and mind, toward it. And what Adam is pointing out here, or what uh, Milton, using the voice of Adam, is pointing out is that, you know, these things can come and go through our minds. And if we swat them away like flies and don't entertain them, don't focus on them, don't develop them. Uh, those are not sins. Not every thought that flits through your mind uh, that comes and goes is going to be sin. If it is unapproved, it leaves no spot or blame behind. And he says, which gives me hope that what in sleep thou didst of what a dream waking, thou never wilt consent to do. Except that, as we know, she does. <laughs> she does consent to do it. And there's all kinds of logical problems here. They're talking about good and evil when they don't have the knowledge of it yet. <laughs> okay, that, And that is necessitated by poetry and drama. You couldn't, uh, you know, Adam and Eve may not have known what it was, but we do. <laughs> and Milton does. Uh, so he has to have that uh, dramatic and poetic license to talk about or have his characters talk about things they couldn't possibly talk about uh, before the actual fall. And there's theological issues that are raised by that, but they're not all that interesting. I suggest right now we do this again. And I'm going to stop here. Are there any questions? Ah, here is... Ah. Avi had a couple of comments. Uh, yeah, Monica, what's, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll read Avi's comments. Monica, you first. Yeah, why the serpent then in the Bible? Why wasn't it another animal? And now as an animal lover, I see a serpent and get scared, which is not fair to the <laughs> serpent. But why the serpent and not, I don't know, a raven or a rat? Do, do you know why? Or? That's a good, well, first of all, ultimately we can't because we're not told. 
Mm. And we are, we are told one thing in scripture. The serpent was the most subtle creature. He already had something in him that was, and by subtle, it means wicked. Yeah. And that, of course, that little bit in the scripture, the fact that the serpent already was somehow fallen mm. okay, before the fall of man and man and man and woman are the kings and queens of creation. All creation falls because they do. But clearly, the serpent already knew sin because he was a tempter. It was a tempter. And that's kind of how the idea of the serpent being Satan, being a form that Satan takes, comes into existence. It's an answer to that question. Mm -hmm. And that already existed uh, in Hellenistic Judaism, in Greek-speaking oh, Judaism. And in some of the uh, Jewish pseudepigrapha, the, the writings that don't get into anybody's Bible, uh, especially the book of Enoch, which mm -hmm. has all the angels and all their names and that sort of stuff. Uh, well, very few people, though, Monica, are afraid of animals. Fewer, fewer people are afraid of animals than are afraid of snakes. I mean, there's mm -hmm. a visceral fear about mm -hmm. snakes that people have. And it probably has, if we want to talk from an evolutionary perspective, probably has something to do with the fact that they slither on the ground and can bite you without you knowing mm -hmm. it. Well, they can also wind around you, you know, and, and, and snare you that way. Yeah, the really big ones crush the life yeah. in you. Yeah. Uh, and, and whisper in your ear. <laughs> yeah. I think, yeah. I, think, I think the snake was chosen because of the physiology of it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, although remember, he, he's more like a kimono dragon uh -huh. before he falls because he has legs, but he's still oh, he? in time. And there's also, and this is our biblical, the, the main biblical source for this entire story, the way that Milton writes it, with sort of Satan as the central character, comes from a single paragraph in the 12th chapter of the book of Revelation, which uh -huh. equates the serpent and Satan. And it refers to him as the dragon, that old serpent, Satan, as if there is something satanic and devilish about serpents to begin with. Mm -hmm. And that, that sort of implies that. Mm -hmm. All right, let me read obvious. Mm -hmm. uh, the novelist Marilyn Robinson gave a lecture last spring at the Chautauqua conference called A Theology of the Present Matter that reprinted as an essay in the New York Review of Books last month worth reading on our current notions of nature and creating. She's speaking up for theism among the literary set nowadays. Well, that's nice to hear. <laughs> that's nice. She's speaking. Marilyn Robinson, I think she wrote Housekeeping? Yeah. That's the novel of hers that I've read. That's a, a very interesting sort of existential novel. Okay. Why don't we... Was that from the same period? No, no. She's a 20th, late 20th century author. Oh, okay. Yeah. Let's go back to the beginning. And Monica, would you read Satan for us? Okay. Okay. For the... Acting yeah. with the boys. Okay. Hold on, hold on just a second. No, you just you don't need that. If you want to do a voice, you can do a voice. But yeah, you can deepen your but, voice. No, this is, we'll see. Hold on a second. This raises an important issue that last night we had a big debate about that wasn't settled. Devils and angels have no gender. Ah. <laughs> right. They aren't male or female, and we have Jesus himself tells us that in the gospels about the angels in heaven. And when he says they are neither married nor taken in marriage. Uh, so the angels of heaven don't have gender. The angels of hell, uh, the fallen ones, the demons, presumably don't either, at least not to start. <laughs> okay, good to know. Yeah. All right, let me cast the other parts here. 
Uh, Bud, why don't you read Sin? And uh, I'll read Adam. And Monica, it looks like you might have to read Eve as well as Satan. Is that okay with you? Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. All right, let me get this up on the screen so our audience at home can look at it. There yeah. we go. Okay. If, if the angels and the devils well, are not a gender, well, if the angels and the devils have no gender, that means they can't create. Exactly. Oh. Exactly. Right. And that's an important thing to remember about Satan and all his legions. They can't make anything. Mm -hmm. Only man can do that. And the main thing that the devils do is whisper, mm -hmm. is tempt, is try to influence us and our behavior. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Those and those things are related. All right. Back to the top of scene eight. Monica. Mm -hmm. Oh, hell. What do my eyes with grief behold into our room of bliss? Thus high advanced creatures of other mold, earthborn perhaps, Ah, gentle pair, ye little think how nigh your change approaches when all these delights will vanish and deliver ye to woe. More woe, the more your taste is now of joy. Henceforth, my dwelling happily may not please like this fair paradise, your sense, yet such accept your maker's work. He gave it me which I freely give, hell shall unfold to entertain you too, her widest gates. Thank him who puts me loath to this revenge on you, who wronged me not for him who wronged. And should I at your harmless innocence melt as I do, yet public reason just, honor and empire with revenge enlarged, by conquering this new world, compels me now to do what else though damned I should abhor. Do you want me to read this? Right. Yeah, go ahead and read Adam. Okay. okay. Fair concert, the hour of night, and all things now retired to rest. Successive and the timely dew of sleep, now falling with soft slumbrous weight inclines. Our eyelids, other creatures all day long grove idle, unemployed, and less need rest. Man hath his daily work of body or mind, appointed which declares his dignity. With thee conversing, I forget all time, all seasons under change, all pleas alike. Sweet is the breath of morning, her rising sweet with charm of earliest verse. Blessed the sun when first on this delight land, he spreads his orient beams on herb, tree, fruit, and flower, glistering with dew, fragrant the fertile earth after soft showers, and sweet the coming on of grateful evening mild. Then silent night with this her solemn bird and this fair moon, and this the gems of heaven, her star, starry train, but neither breath or mourn when she ascends with charm of earliest birds, nor rising sun on this delight, delightful land, nor herb, fruit, flower, glistering with dew, nor fragrance after showers, nor grateful evening mild, nor silent night with this her stolen bird, nor walk by moon or glistering starlight, Without thee is sweet. Thank you. Monica, why don't we have uh, Bud read Satan mm -hmm. this time? Yes. I don't want to confuse to people much. too much. I, okay, Bud, go ahead. Can I, can I talk like I'm Satan? <laughs> Absolutely. No. If you want to no. if you want to sound like a villain. <laughs> Slight hateful, sight tormenting. Thus these two, parsed in each uh, one under this arms, the happier Eden shall enjoy their fill. Oh, bless, bless, and bless, while I to hell am thrust, where neither joy nor love, but fierce desire, among all our other torments, not the least, 
still unfulfilled with pain of longing pines. Satan is joined by sin. Uh, the animal spirits that from pure blood arise, like gentle breasts from rivers pure, thence raise at least distempered, disconnected thoughts, vain hopes, vain aims, inordinate desires, blown up with high conceits, engendering pride. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. So Satan was talking to sin, and now sin will seek to tempt Eve. Why sleepest thou, Eve? Now is the pleasant time, the cool, the silent, save where silence yields to the night warbling bird that now awake tunes sweetest his love labored song. Now reigns full orbed the moon and with more pleasing light shadowy sets off the face of things. In vain, if none regard, Heaven wakes with all his eyes, whom to behold but thee, nature's desire, in whose sight all things joy, with ravishment attracted by thy beauty still to gaze. Then to the tree, but what fair plant see I with fruit surcharged? Deigns none to ease thy load and taste thy sweet, nor God, nor man, is knowledge so despised, or envy, or what reserve forbids to taste? Forbid who will, none shall from me withhold longer thy offered good. Why else set here? Sweet of thyself, but much more sweet thus cropped, forbidden here, it seems as only fit for gods, yet able to make gods of men. And why not gods of men, since good, the more communicated, more abundant grows, the author not impaired, but honored more. Here, happy creature, fair angelic Eve, partake thou also. Happy thou art, happier thou mayst be, worthier canst not be. Taste this, and be henceforth among the gods, thyself a goddess, not to earth confined. Now, why don't Monica, why don't you read Eve here? Okay. Oh, soul in whom my thoughts find all repose, my glory, my perfection, glad I see thy face and more return, for I this night, such night, Till this I never passed have dreamt. Close at my ear, one called me forth to walk with gentle voice. I thought it thine. It spoke, I rose as at thy call, but found thee not. To find thee, I directed then my walk, and on, methought, alone I passed through ways that brought me on a sudden to the tree of interdicted knowledge. Fair it seemed, much fairer to my fancy that by day. And as I wandered, looked, beside it stood one shaped and winged like one of those from heaven. By us oft seen, her dewy locks distill ambrosia. On that tree she also gazed, and then she passed not, but with Venturus' arm she plucked, she tasted. Me damped horror chilled as such bold mind vouched with a deed so bold. So doing she drew nigh and to me held even to my mouth of that same fruit held part which she had plucked. The pleasant savory smell so quick, so quickened appetite that I, methought, could not but taste. Forthwith up to the clouds with her I flew and underneath beheld the earth outstretched in man's a prospect wide and various, wondering at my flight and change to this high exaltation. Suddenly my guide was gone, and I, methought, sunk down and fell asleep. But oh, how glad I waked to find this but a dream. Before we have Bud read Satan here, I'm sorry I keep changing the cast, but... Uh, <laughs> I like being Satan. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I'll oh, consider I like I'll consider that a confession. You're absolved. <laughs> uh, I like being Eve too. How strange is that? That is one of the problems of acting, isn't it? You know, Paul <laughs> tells us to put on the Lord Jesus Christ. But if you are an actor playing Satan, uh, you're maybe getting too intimate a knowledge of him for your own spiritual health. Oh, it's, right? it's got to me. It's got to me. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and how many times course. have you heard an actor for you know movies or whatever who? get into a role that is really dark, 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 and they can't seem to let it go. Yeah, yeah, that happens. It is one of the dangers of acting and frankly of writing. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, Milton, here is Milton uh, giving Satan more lines or more copy uh, yeah. than almost any other character. And of course, when you write, every character you're writing is an aspect of yourself. Right. Ultimately, mm -hmm. you are, there's a part of you that is in the villain as well as in the hero. Mm -hmm. And that's why sometimes Satan has some very perceptive lines. <laughs> the one thing I oh. want to point out in this last speech here is about dreams. This dream that sin sort of implants in Eve is a, a visionary dream. It's a prophetic dream, like some of the dreams in the Bible. Uh, the dream of Joseph, uh, the, the, the angel speaks to, the angels tend to speak to men, uh, particularly in the New Testament, in their dreams, whereas they speak to women face to face in person. Uh, there's a lot to be said there, I suppose. But dreams are a very important part of the biblical worldview. They are a means of spiritual communication. They're a way that God talks to us. And they are a means of prophecy. Uh, the prophet's dream. And he will say, I dreamed a dream and in the dream, mm -hmm. okay? Of course, Joseph in Genesis uh, is, is the best example of this because his dreaming and interpreting other people's dreams uh, causes him to become the grand vizier of the Pharaoh of Egypt. He's the number two man, which gives him the ability to save his family. Mm -hmm. They're very important. And it's a, it's a good thing that Milton has used a dream to give sort of a foundation for what happens later when she actually, when Eve actually does eat the fruit. But I cut you off. Did you have? Uh, I like being Satan now. Oh, okay. You like me. Okay. Just make sure you project so everybody can hear you. <clears throat> One fatal tree, there stands a knowledge called forbidden them to taste. Knowledge forbidden. Can it be death? And do they only stand by ignorance? Is that their happy state? The proof of their obedience and their faith? Oh, fair foundation laid wherein to build thy ruin. Hence I will excite their minds with more desire to know and to reject envious commands invented with design to keep them low from whom knowledge might exalt. But, but first with narrow search, I must walk around this garden, and no corner leave unsp unspied. Um, yeah, yet happy pair enjoy till I return. Short pleasures for long woes are to succeed. Who's the happy pair he's talking to, bud? Happy pair? Um, oh, she's, okay. she's, she, she's much better than I am. Adam and Eve, is it? Yeah. Adam and Eve, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. He's talking to Adam and Eve, and he's talking about the, the dream that Eve just articulated. Uh, and the fact is, Satan really offended by God not allowing all his creatures all knowledge? Uh, it almost seems like he is, isn't he? I mean, he, he wants... Uh, he wants humans on his side. He wants them to join his rebellion against God. 
that's kind of his whole purpose here. And he he walks around the garden like he's casing the joint. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, he wants to know uh, how he's, he's trying to figure out how he's going to do this. What's the best approach to these humans? Okay, so he doesn't, in Milton's reckoning, he doesn't just approach Eve to begin with. He spies on them for a while, and he gets to know all the creatures in the garden uh, before he picks uh, how he's going to approach the first couple and in what form and in what way he's going to approach them. Mm, he wants to make sure. He's checking every corner of the garden. <laughs> checking every corner of the garden. That's right. That's right. All right. Best image of myself and dear half, the trouble of thy thoughts this night in sleep. Are you Satan? No, I'm. You know, now he's oh, reading Adam. Adam. He's reading oh. Adam. I'm back to normal. Back <laughs> <laughs> to normal. Well, let's, let's not do that. Uh, you read that last time. Monica, do you want to read the final speech of Adam in this scene? Adam, yes. Best image of myself and the other half, the trouble of thy thoughts this night in sleep affects me equally. Nor can I like this uncouth dream of evil sprung I fear, yet evil whence in thee can harbor known, created pure. But know that in the soul are many lesser faculties that serve reason as chief. Among this fancy next, wild work produces oft and most in dreams, ill matching words and deeds long past or late, evil into the mind of God or man, may come and go so and approve it and leave no spot or blame behind, which gives me hope that what in sleep thou didst abhor to dream, waking thou never wilt consent to do. Be not disheartened then, not cloud those looks, and let us to our fresh employments rise among the, gro the groves, the fountains, and the flowers. Perfect. Were you trying to make your voice deeper there? Yes, <laughs> but I did not succeed. <laughs> My voice is like a little bird's voice, yeah. Can you get down here? Oh, I need to go that deep. Yes. <laughs> it's Satan. That's a great voice, yeah. <laughs> oh, Peggy can do it better than I can. Let's see it again. My precious. Oh, that's... <laughs> Very. Very good. Very good. I, I, I've had nightmares. <laughs> I've had oh, nightmares. <laughs> I think Speaking. I must have missed something in this speech of Adam, uh -huh. talk, he mentions sin. Did I miss something about how he knows that sin is there? I must have missed something. No, you haven't missed something. It's a paradox of this poem. Okay. Be because, yeah, he can't know about sin. And he knows that something is forbidden because okay. God has told them that something is forbidden. Right. Uh, and maybe there's an implication there. Uh, you wouldn't think he would know to name evil until he had knowledge of it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it, so it is a, something of a paradox of how he does. This, it. this is this is the author being omniscient again. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Uh, one thing I wanted to point out, and this will be a good place to end. Uh, we're going to do scene nine next week. Uh, Adam says that the dream, this uncouth dream of evil sprung affects him as much as it does Eve who dreamt it. Hmm. Why is that? Because the two of them are one, right? Yeah. The creation. Exactly. Exactly. What did she say? The two of them are one. Yeah, they are one body as a couple one body spiritually, though not physically, though when they come together, they are of one body. Mm -hmm. And that is how men and women are made. Uh, and one of the things that they are made for, and in the last session, I asked at the end uh, for people to read Genesis 1 
and read it in the King James, and I ask the question, how many genders did God create? <laughs> oh, really? Okay. <laughs> and it's something that Milton understands, but that gets lost for most people. The King James says, man and woman created he them. All right. What does that sentence mean? Hmm. It means he created them man and woman. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That he created each of us male and female. Each of us? Each of us. Yeah. And that is one of the ways of understanding the difference between Genesis 1 and Genesis 2. Okay. And it's a very ancient understanding of the text. And when God when it says that God made Adam, I mean, made Eve from Adam's side. That was Genesis 2. Yeah, and the, and the word rib. A rib. Yeah. Okay, which is, it's really from his side. And the ancient mystic understanding of that is that he pulls the feminine out of mm. Adam. Mm. He divides human. What he creates is Adam, which means humanity mm -hmm. creates it out of the clay the clay of the earth which is red adon mm -hmm. the hebrew so those things are connected the dirt that we're made from and us are connected linguistically in the hebrew and he divides that creation in two to give adam a help meet for him mm -hmm. a helper who is fit for him which can only be his better half, which is where huh. that phrase better half comes from. Mm. Now, the better mm. half of Adam was Eve, and she mm. was taken out of him, which is what Eve is a pun on the Hebrew for taken out of Adam. And it is the part of Adam that is taken out of him. Uh, so yes, God created two genders, uh, but to start with, we have a little bit of each of them in us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's true too, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah really. that's, that's something that's important to mm -hmm. remember. Uh, and of course, the reason I asked that was because we had somebody in our previous session who was sort of harping on that. And uh, so I put that down as a challenge. And I think the other class rose to it. Next week, we will all be together again, I hope, because we'll all be on Thursday, and we will do section scene nine. And for the group yesterday, I already cast it, but I want, I want to do, put two, two casts, as I always have, for this section. So, uh, Monica, if you would read Eve in scene nine. Okay. And uh, Bud, if you would read Adam. Okay. Can I do Satan again? <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, interesting, I, think you, interesting, I think you're going enough, there too much. <laughs> interestingly enough, Satan is not in scene nine. Yay. Oh, okay. <laughs> Raphael is in scene nine. Oh. The, the archangel whose name means the medicine of God. Mm -hmm. God's medicine, uh, God's healing. And uh, if you would be prepared to, oh, goodness. But if you'd be prepared to read both Adam and God. There we go. Okay, sure. All right. So we have two casts. That'll make it easier if somebody doesn't make it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And everybody will be uh, ready to do something. So I'm going to stop sharing because it's so annoying. And uh, any final questions, comments, smart remarks? I'm actually going to walk around the house here all week being Satan. No, you're not. <laughs> you can't be Satan anymore. What? No, please don't. <laughs> please, yes, please don't be Satan, bud. It's, it's, it's not good. Monica, any questions or comments? No, I just really loved um, the part when Eve says good night. I read it twice, so it's it's lovely. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's very poetic. It, and, uh, isn't it nice? Yeah, it's really beautiful. And, and Milton has a sense of the marriage relationship that is a real breath of fresh air. Uh, mm -hmm. It's very modern. Uh, I was going to say that, how they talk is not like in the Bible, of course. It's not well, they, like in the yeah, actual in, Paradise Lost. Yeah. In the Bible, they, they don't really say much they to don't. each other. Because, uh -huh. They don't talk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there, there's, there's just not that much detail in scripture. Mm -hmm. And they're more archetypes in scripture yeah. than they are characters. Milton turns them into literary characters. Mm -hmm. And much of, <clears throat> I don't know if I said this last time, but much, so much of what we understand of Adam and Eve really comes from this. Mm -hmm. uh, instead of directly from the Bible. Uh, oh. Because what Milton is doing is interpreting scripture. Mm -hmm. interpreting even in, mm -hmm. in paintings from, you know, medieval Renaissance, you see, you know, the, the tree, the apple, the serpent, Adam and Eve. It's, just, it's been uh, interpreted in so many ways. Right. Yeah. Right. And that brings up my final question of the session. What was the fruit on the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? An apple? Well, that's, what everybody th that's what everybody thinks. And why do they think that? Because Milton used the word apple. It was a pomegranate. <laughs> pomegranate is more likely given the, the geography. But another thing is true that, you know, the Bible just says fruit. It doesn't give any more specification than that. And what's interesting is that the medieval English word for fruit is apple. Oh, um, oh really? From which we get a particular fruit in mind when we think of that word. But Milton may have just been saying fruit, <laughs> just, <laughs> like, just like the scripture does. But because but in of all this, the paintings, is the apple. Yeah, right, the paintings. all the paintings, mm. it's the apple. Yeah. yeah. It's nice. Yeah. I don't think you'll find apple trees in Mesopotamia yes. or yeah. East Africa, either of the places where yeah. maybe the Garden of Eden was. It, it, it comes to mind the painting by, um, oh, the, the Garden of Pleasure and Evils. Uh, oh, Haramus Bosch. Yeah. Haramus Bosch. Yeah. Yeah. What's it called? The Garden of what? Of Pleasures mm -hmm. and Evil by Bosch. Oh, Bosch, right. Okay. Yeah, it has a lot of little things, the, the little devils, the mm. hell, and then paradise. It's like a triptych. It's three, yeah. like three parts. Yeah, it's very Oh, the Garden of Earthly Delights. Yeah, that one. Yeah, the Garden yeah. of Earthly Delights. Yes. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> there we go. Mm hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Let's take a look at that maybe next time. Yeah. Wow, I'm I'm seeing little details from it. <laughs> oh yeah, if, if you you will never finish just looking at it. Or I haven't seen it in person. It's in the Prado in Madrid, but I've seen in books, and I want to see that one. It's just you know so many things going on there. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at a. Uh... <laughs> we used to have in all my art books. I had that, but they're gone yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> I, I hate to show my ignorance, but I've never seen this before. Uh, I've got a big Bosch table book too. It's probably in there. Oh, I'm mm -hmm. sure it is. It's an, this is the, one of his most famous paintings now. Wow. Mm -hmm. That is really interesting. And the little devils are very, very interesting. Yeah, how they are depicted. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> interesting. All right. Well, I'm talking about satanic. Some of the I will satanic. spend some more time with that. And uh, take a look at your lines for next time. And uh, we'll gather by the river again at seven o'clock next Thursday. Excellent. Okay. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Good Bye. night.